G'day. Hello there. I'm Ozzy Robbo. I'm English Gent. And welcome back to another program that you thought had been cancelled. What has Darren been buying? Not just me, but yeah, it's been six months in the waiting. We've got two large boxes here from our trip to Disney World and or Universal back in February 2022. Um, it's been a while since we've looked at the contents, so why don't you join us and find out what exactly we both bought. We both bought. So as we just said a moment ago, it's been a while since we've done one of these unboxings, so I might be a little rusty on this one. But not only are we doing an unboxing, but we're also doing a trip announcement at the end. Yeah, so please stick around to the end of the vlog, because uh, we'll be giving you more detail about what we're going to be doing this month of September 2022. Uh, but let's crack on with the unboxing, as we say, it's going to be pretty much all Walt Disney World. So first up, uh, there is a lot to go through, but let's break us in softly. We're just going to start with some plushes. Let's see what I did there. Um, so, uh, I don't know if, if you've seen the different places we went, we pretty much got something that represents every park that we went to. Uh, one of the first ones we got, or I got, was the um, Figment. So it's a shoulder pal. So they literally they have a little magnet underneath and they go there. And not only did I get Figment, which you have seen in the vlog from Epcot, but also got the Orange Bird. So I can proudly walk around with two characters, two of my favourite characters on my shoulders. They're really nice, they're actually quite cheap and cheerful and they work really well for shoulders. Kids, and we saw quite a few kids wearing them and adults and um, yeah, they're really cute and not too badly priced. Um, we also went to the Polynesian. Um, while we were at the Polynesian, we did buy, buy a few bits, but one of the things I really love is the Duffy and Friends, especially Olu Mel. And we've managed to get a key ring of Olu Mel. We've already got one of the plushes, like the full size, imported in from Alani Resort in Hawaii. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little key ring plush. Um, it's wearing like a shirt and Bermuda shorts. And yeah, I really like that. Of course, it wouldn't be a trip for us to Disney World without going to Galaxy's Edge, and we made numerous um, sort of visits. And actually, you bought some things from Galaxy's Edge, uh, which were plushes for a change. What do you get? Uh, you were buying them, so I bought some at the same time, yes. Yes. I got uh, Darth Maul, so it's a Darth Maul plush, basically. And I also got uh, Chewbacca. <laughs> which is... Um, you didn't seem to like this very much when I was buying it apart. <laughs> it's his face. <laughs> considering you were, well, all the faces are quite basic, but considering you were dressed as Chewbacca. True. Yeah, so all these plushes are kind of done in world, so they're kind of like, plushes you would buy if you were on the planet itself. So none of them actually have Star Wars written on them. They're just literally the character names. So I got a Princess Leia, which we also bought for two of our favorite girls. Um, we did. Who loved it, even though they have no idea who she is. They just know she's a princess. Um, and then also the character we didn't actually see while we were there, which I was disappointed, were in Doc Ondar's uh, shop, was Doc Ondar himself. And they actually made a plush of him. And it's actually quite nicely detailed, different textures. Um, all the elements that make up Doc Ondar, including his feet, which you don't normally get to see. Uh, one of my favourite characters, and one we've done a review of her lightsabers, um, is Ahsoka Tano. So they actually have that one introduced now. They've introduced quite a few characters there now, and they're all various sizes and prices. But yeah, I really like the way they've put this one together. It's got all the kind of the costume textures going on. Um, another thing we're huge fans of when we go to Disney are the um, Chippendale, of course. And I didn't actually buy any Chippendale plushes, but somebody else did. Yeah, I think you, everyone saw this in the video. They saw me picking this up when we did uh, the dinosaur ride. And uh, these were just too cute to pass up, even though I don't know where we're going to put them or what we're going to do with them. No, but where but, are the uh, pins? <laughs> Where are the matching pins? We want pins. We've seen them on Etsy, um, but we really like some official pins of them in these. And then the next trip we're taking, hopefully we'll get to meet them because it's just been announced that they're doing the meet and greets dressed as the dinosaurs again. So that'd be cool. One of the favorite places that we ate while we we're in uh, Walt Disney World, and it was actually quite a nice surprise. And it was just next to our resort at Caribbean Beach was the Riviera, which is a French kind of continental sort of theme resort. We did the character breakfast. That was amazing, but also all the characters were dressed as artisans, like sort of different. So you got poets, and uh, Donald was a sculptor, I believe. So he's got like a little uh, sort of apron with all his tools and his little red neckerchief. And yeah, I really like they got them all, but we just we were kind of quite taken with um, Donald. And on the bottom, you've got sort of resort specific labeling um, stitched into the foot for the Riviera. So that was our plush. And considering we weren't going to buy any plushes, we've got almost half a square meter of plushes. Um, some of them I actually might take back with us this next trip. 
we'll see. Because um, they are quite fun to have on you, and they do stick with you. Uh, but the rest of them will probably just go to store <laughs> at this point. But yeah, so that's our plushes. What's next? Sticking with the Riviera, I'm um, we actually quite impressed with the store there. It's a very small store, but it had quite a nice range of items for the resort. Yeah. You quite liked it. I was quite surprised at how much you liked it. Much to the point where you actually got the um, Riviera official sort of magnet, fridge magnet. Did I buy that? Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, but yeah, it's, it's a nice sort of illustration, keeping in theming with the Riviera and the kind of uh, continental sort of vibe. Um, it's chain. more of like a souvenir kind of type thing. Yeah, but it's kind of, it's a really thick metal sort of yep. plated thing. That's been on our fridge for the last six months. And then also to go with that, they had ornaments. So most of the resorts will actually have Christmas ornaments. Um, and we just kind of like this just because Mickey and Minnie are dressed rather smartly. And it's quite like a nice pair of chinos, a suitcase or a briefcase. Um, but yeah, so we've got uh, one of the resort decorations there, even though we've not stayed there. Um, and then talking resorts and keeping that theme, I really love the Polynesian. Well, we both really love the Polynesian. It's like it's got a really nice vibe, yeah. especially the whole tiki vibe. And I, so I bought one of their sort of like um, iconic sort of totem decorations. We got a few bits from there, which we'll probably show you a bit more later on. Um, but yeah, we sort of hit them really hard. Well, I did especially, along with the Olu Mel. So that's, yeah, those little bits. So while we're in Batu, we did go and get a couple of the sporks. These were sold out the first time we went, so uh, we were quite happy to get them this time. Yeah. They were about $12 each, I think, before tax, and you just buy them at the cash register when you're ordering your food. At Docking Bay 7. Yes. Yeah, Docking Bay 7. So yeah, just a metal, <laughs> just a standard metal uh, spork, which you can probably buy a lot cheaper on Amazon, but it's obviously part of the whole Batu thing, so we, uh, we really like that. And we've used it loads. <laughs> we didn't actually even use it in the park. No. Uh, but no, we, I, I will say that it, they are nice. They've got like a sort of in-world sort of vibe to them. And they've also got a prison vibe to them as well. Yeah. <laughs> they should be served on a metal tray. It's a shank. So those of you who have been subscribed for a while and been watching our February to now trip, um, it's been about, what, 26 episodes for the trip. And one of our favorite days was going to Epcot for the Festival of the Arts or farts as it's known. This is our first visit and actually some of our favorite artists were there, especially this one. So this is uh, Gerard Mariama and he basically has done loads and loads of pieces of art and we actually got to meet him. This one is the Country Bear Jamboree and then just we've kept inside we've got a postcard which is the Orange Bird um, and he signed those, we had a chat. Um, I got slightly emotional because I never thought I'd get to meet him. We didn't, we've been connected with him for a long time on social media and it was a real pleasure to sort of meet him and actually have him sort of talk about his work and his, you know, everything else that comes with being a Disney artist. The second one I saw is an artist. I, I, I've seen his work, but I don't know anything about him, but I fell in love with this particular piece, which is Donald Duck. Um, so this is Glenn McClough, McClough, McClough. McClough, McCullough, McCullough. Um, he's, he's only, I literally, I've only just learnt about him in the last few weeks as, as to how popular he is, but this, I just love this. If I could have the original painting of this with all the paint strokes and the oil, um, I, yeah, it's beautiful. And it's just, it kind of gets me down to a T. Yeah. So this is Chris Uminga, and um, we, we met him, so I bought this for Darren, this isn't for me. So I bought this for Darren, and uh, we went up and had a chat with him. He was a really nice guy, really uh, interesting, and talked to him about comics and stuff. Yeah, he, he was really, it was, it was a bonus because we didn't know he was going to be there. And then finally, um, this is actually one of my favorites as well. Um, we've got a few pieces. Uh, we bought originally unknowingly, but actually they were kind of uh, not even art, it's kind of uh, figures and stuff. Uh, this is David Perillo, and again, Orange Bird is represented rather nicely. He has a really nice style. Um, kind of along the same lines of Shag, if you know him as an artist who does a lot of Star Wars and Disney Park stuff. Uh, but yeah, so we did really well and we got them back all in one piece, which was yeah, really grateful to the picture gods. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's all the art we got. So, uh, a little few things I bought uh, while I was in Batu. These are those 3D model kits, so I thought it'd be quite interesting to make one of these. This is C-3PO. It takes some nimble hands, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it properly or if I'm even going to make it. Uh, it's, uh, and I also bought uh, DJ Rex as well. Yeah, that looks like a really complicated one. Yeah. But uh, we've, we've actually got the pliers, the, the little model pliers to use, so we're going to have a, at least have a go. 
So while we are at the Wilderness Lodge, uh, Darren did convince me into buying another piece of... Uh, you. You, you were talking me into it. So you convinced me. Uh, you actually saw it on the video, so it's kind of no surprise really, but uh, I did buy a piece of Wilderness Lodge memorabilia uh, that I thought was quite nice. Uh, that it is a piece in the hotel. So the souvenir I did buy is a totem of Mickey, Goofy, Donald and the bear. And it does have Wilderness Lodge on the back as well, so it does show Wilderness Lodge. But it's quite cute and it's a nice little souvenir of a lodge I'm probably not going to get to stay at any time soon uh, because it's so expensive. But um, I, I really like that whole lodge and I, you know, that does has turned into my favourite uh, resort that I would like to go to if uh, money was no object. It's very really nice, but actually, how much was it around? It wasn't that expensive. This, one's th this one was $30 and they did a Christmas decoration which was about a quarter of the size and that was 25, $25, which was quite surprising how expensive it was. Yeah, but that's really nice. Actually, I've yeah, very much liked that one. So they also did do a set of coasters to do a Smokey the Bear, which were kind of in the same theming and then it was really cute. So I, I, Darren says that I bought this one for $5. They had a, some other ones as well, but so they, didn't, they only had that one in stock. They had this one in stock for some reason, but they showed the other ones as well. On the next trip, I might nip out there just to see if they have got any more because they are quite pricey to get on the internet but there's a series of them and it's basically he's the Smokey the Bear for those who don't know is the national mascot for you know basically safety in national parks. Just setting fires in national parks? Yes, yeah, starting fires and pin was it pinching picnic baskets? Whoa. Isn't that Yogi the Bear? Yeah. <laughs> Two random things I never thought I'd buy or come back with from Disney was First of all, this. Um, so I've got like now a bit of a fascination with dustbins, uh, the trash cans in Disney parks, and they actually made this one. Um, I think it's the Main Street, yeah, the Main Street bin. Um, and I've been taking photos ever since of all the different sort of designs and graphics on the bins. So you can see more of those later on in the coming year because I'm going to go around wall. And another thing which is actually quite handy. It's actually you know not just pretty, but it's Walt Disney World fan. <laughs> You could have read the wrong way. A Walt Disney World fan, <laughs> so, which we, I think I bought on the last day, was it? It was the last day, it was the first day it was released, because I remember you making a big deal about the fan and you were um and ahhing about the fan, but it was the first day that it was released in the parks and uh, it was in the shop, so we bought it there in the shop. And they've seemed to have continued, I've seen since we've left, uh, they've got orange book ones, they've got all sorts, they've got pride ones. Um, but yeah, it's actually, I've actually used this one and one similar to this, which I got from Tricks and Tell, same size. Um, quite a lot in the hot summer months in London. So, that's so we've also got some pins, of course. Um, we actually came back with a lot more. We're not going to go into great detail about them because there's way too many. Uh, but one that you bought, which was rather special. Yeah, I was looking for this pin all over the park. It's a very big pin. It's a limited release pin that was only available in the park. And I was looking all over for this, but it was sold out by the time we got there. You couldn't, I couldn't find it anywhere. It might have been somewhere, but I couldn't find it. And it's the uh, hollow chest pin from Star Wars A New Hope that they sold in the parks and it retailed up, well it's actually got a price here, for $60. But I think I got it for about 35 pounds off Double Box Toys when they had a sale on it because they were selling it for an extortionate amount. But they had a sale and I managed to get it for like about 35 pounds, which was cheaper than you would have bought it in the park. And in it's the first pretty. Place. It's a very nice pin, so it's, it's, it's a very, very cool pin. It's a jumbo pin, yeah. so yeah. We did buy lots more pins. So cue corny elevator music and we'll show them now. Uh, from this most recent series, we did one which was in Magic Kingdom in the evening, and that was Enchantment. We were there primarily for Enchantment and other bits and bobs. And uh, we went to um, one of the stores, and I saw some things that I absolutely fell in love with. But the question is, how did I get them home? Because they were big and boxy, and they are the stretching room portraits, but done in a style of um, statues, little maquettes. Um, so these, I bought three in the end. So we've got 
at my favourite, which is Alexander, the gentleman who stands on a powder keg and um, is wearing box shorts and sock suspenders and a very fine beard. I can't imagine why I'm so into that. Um, but yeah, that's the first one I decided to get. And then the other one was the three gentlemen in the, in the quicksand. And then finally, it's the ballerina above the alligator. Now, if you know the name of the ballerina, because there's mixed reports, I believe she's called Sally. However, there are mixed views on what her name is. Um, so if you could give us a comment down below of what, if you know the facts of what her name is. But these are, yeah, these are all brilliantly, beautifully sculpted. And you kind of helped me with that. You actually sort of went and ordered them for me, didn't you? I arranged the order. So this is, this is one of these items where you can, when you're in the parks, you can get stuff sent to your home. In America, it's very easy. If you're sending overseas, it becomes a lot harder. Not necessarily because it's a difficult process, but they don't get it very often. They had never, they had never encountered it in the uh, Memento Mori shop where we bought these. So we had two of them sent back and you got one of them from Double Box Toys. Yeah, the, uh, the, sorry, yeah, the ballerina I actually bought after we got back because I like them yeah. so much. So it took about half an hour to do the postage for the uh, two items because, like I say, they just hadn't encountered it. They were very nice about the whole thing, but they uh, hadn't encountered it before. So, uh, yeah, we sent them back from memory for two, because it's been a while. It's been eight months since we did this. I think it was $70 in total, wasn't it? For the postage on top of the, on top of the price of the items, I think. I remember. didn't, and when they, they actually arrived really quickly, they actually were quite surprised. It was about two weeks. Yeah. Which... But what I will say is, they give you tracking, and that seems fine, I guess, if you're in the US. But when we came over to the UK and we tried to put in the tracking numbers into the UK site, it didn't work at all, so we couldn't work out the tracking. We only found out it had arrived when they asked for uh, the tax, the import tax. Which actually wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be, but it is something, whenever you get anything imported, especially now after Brexit, um, import tax will be added but it is an option if there is that thing that you really must have and you know you're not going to get it over here easily um, then yeah I grabbed these and I'm really glad we are because they are real proper keepsakes and all I need now is um, the last one which is the uh, lady uh, I want to say half away but if you are in the parks and you do see something of a fair size that you don't want to take in your suitcase that um, you want to ship back. They do do shipping for overseas people as well as for people in America. Yeah, so it's an option. Yeah. On to the final leg now. So in a rare turn of events, I did buy some clothing as well from the Disney parks. I don't normally like a lot of the t-shirts or the clothing in the Disney parks, but there were a couple of t-shirts that I did fancy and so I bought some, which I'll be wearing on my next trip in oh, just over a week. Um, so the first one is, uh, is it Florida? Walt Disney World, uh, Wish You Were Here. Yes, and so it's done in the postcard fashion. Postcard style. I thought that was quite cute, so uh, I like that one. We've got a bit of an obsession with that kind of lettering, so yeah, it, that was very much you. I bought a pink t-shirt, which I normally wouldn't go for. Red's fine, but pink, I was a little, uh, is this a woman's one? So, yeah, still a little unsure, but... <laughs> Makes the boys wink. But um, I quite like the designs on this. It's, it's uh, yeah. Got all the bits that come with being in Disney, it's like all the ears. And, yeah, it's mini ears and uh, Mickey ears. And then the third one I bought, oh, I'm a bit jealous, which I really quite liked, is uh, this orange bread one. It's the whole retro, it's, <laughs> it's the whole retro vibe, and um, yeah, I quite liked it. A uh, nice shade of green, but um, yeah, who knows? We might uh, be seeing a bit more of orange bread in the next trip in clothing. Nice. So, um, with it being Florida, and especially in February, it can be quite questionable weather. Um, so I got a couple of waterproofs. So I had the Universal one, which is our Universal, our first Universal one, I think, or yeah, was it the first one? Um, which I very much needed. And then this is a Walt Disney World 50th, and it's got quite a nice detail of the zipped hood. Um, I actually forgot I bought this, so this is going to come in quite useful, and I actually might take it with us for our next trip, considering it's kind of hurricane season. But yeah, it's just representing the 50th. It's quite nice colours. It's got my favourite shade of yellow, like mustard yellow on it. Um, it's sort of like royal blue. Um, Star Wars bits. I bought this jacket after seeing it on another, after a Cal California vlogger, a couple uh, bought it. And it's kind of like in world, and it's a, basically a light jacket uh, in Galaxy's Edge, sort of arabesque style, sort of army green, zip detail with the 
um, arabesque going down the insides. But yeah, it's just like a light jacket. Probably wear it next spring. Might even wear it for celebration one day if we get the costume that goes with it. This was very popular when we were there with our Star Wars friends. Hello, Ted and Mish. Um, this is a Star Wars spirit jersey. Um, just simple. Um, it's literally got the stars, the classic 1970s Star Wars logo, and then on the back, along the back of the arms, a long time ago. Does it go? Oh yeah, it does go. A long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. Um, I'll be getting a lot of use once it starts getting colder. Yeah, whenever that is in London. And then again, this is something that I saw similar to Rob with the um, Star Wars pin. This was available while it was like locked down and during the pandemic and it's very seasonal. So I'm going to get some wear out of this this winter, which is a Walt Disney World cardigan, men's cardigan. There was a load of footage of you trying this on, so there's quite yeah. a lot of footage in that episode. So that's, yeah, that's really that soft. Animal Kingdom? Yeah, Animal Kingdom all places. And then finally, you may have seen this in the vlogs, but I got a bucket hat. Yeah, lovely bucket hat. But not only that, when we got back, I managed to find the matching shirt to go with it. So it's a Hawaiian style shirt with Mickey and Minnie doing hula, very Hawaiian. Very, very soft. Very soft, very light. I'm actually going to take that with us for our next trip. Whether I'll wear it with the hat as well, we'll see what the weather's like, whether I need the hat. I'm guessing we might do with the sun. But yeah, that's everything for this trip. <laughs> the next trip won't be as much. We definitely won't be bringing back as much. Um, it's yeah, it was a one-off. Uh, we had we had the budget. We decided to treat ourselves. We had a good time with it. Um, now we've got with the exchange rate, we won't have budget this time. Yeah, the exchange rate is terrible. But speaking of this time round, uh, what are we doing? So basically, in uh, eight days from now, yeah, when this is being filmed, we are flying back to Florida. Who are we going with? We are flying with Virgin. We are flying premium. Premium economy yeah. for the first time. So flying premium economy for the first time for us. So we'll be giving uh, quite a big evaluation uh, on our opinions of premium economy. And we'll also explain how we kind of booked that. Because it wasn't plain sailing. No. But more details when that happens. Uh, but yeah, we're going back with Virgin. Uh, we're going to be staying on property yet again. And uh, where we're we staying, we're staying at... Pop Century. Pop Century, which is actually the first resort we ever stayed in uh, when we went back in 2017. It's since had improvements made on the rooms. We hope they are improvements, but we'll be sharing those with you. Uh, so it's going to be Pop Century. The main reason for that was because where it's situated. So uh, we're not we're not hiring a car this time again because we actually quite we, we we got around all right on the last trip without the car. We actually managed yep. to do okay. Uh, so it's on the Skyliner uh, sort of route next to Hollywood Studios and Epcot, so we're, we're happy with that. What else will we be doing while we're there? We'll be doing Discovery Cove, first time. Yes, and we will be doing the Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. Yeah, so Halloween Horror Nights at Universal, we're trying to do it all in one night, so um, I decided to basically fork out a little bit of dough. It's a one-off thing, and we're going to do the RIP tour. So we're going to literally do Halloween Horror Nights all in one night. We're going to get that out to you and it's going to have full coverage of everything we get up to. What else are we going to be doing? So Scurry Cove, we've got Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. Oh, yeah, so we've never done that before, we've done the Christmas before. And then we've got, I'd say, 10 restaurants booked currently. Whether we'll kit stick to all those, but a few of them to mention. Uh, we're going to go back to Space 220 to try the lounge experience. Uh, we're going to go to Ahana. For our third attempt to get in there. We've had to cancel the last two times we've had bookings for it. California Grill is another one. We're going to be seeing some friends out there and we'll be going back to Steakhouse 71 for an evening meal which I'm really looking forward to because we enjoyed it last time. Yep. Uh, where else are we going? Uh, we're going to character, break, uh, character, character meals. So character meals are actually back in full force and when we go back we'll actually have the opportunity to go to the Crystal Palace where it's Winnie the Pooh and Friends. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one for us. We've actually started to slowly come around to the character meals. Not so much hugs and kisses but character meals we're quite into. Who's doing um, the kisses? Other people. Um, but yeah so there's that one and then we're doing Tusker House at Animal Kingdom because uh, we're going to be doing one full day at Animal Kingdom this trip. And then finally, we're going to return to somewhere where we haven't been for since 2017, which is the Garden Grill at Epcot, because we really enjoyed the character interaction last time we were there when we were treated uh, with our friends Tanamish 
that was a nice surprise. Uh, so we're looking forward to going back there. Plus loads of other stuff. Uh, we're going to be there for two weeks and we can't wait to share it all with you. Um, so thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below as to what your favourite items we've shown are, what you would buy when you're out there, what you have bought when you've been out there, uh, what collections you have. We love to hear these things. It's great to interact with you all. Um, don't forget to join us on Twitter and Instagram. That's Aussie Robbo English Gent on Instagram. Robbo and Gent on Twitter. And we'll see you next time. And it'll be for a trip. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.